In this tutorial, we're going to talk about section 5.3, concurrent lines, medians, and altitudes. Let's get some vocabulary terms out of the way first. The first vocabulary word is concurrent. And this is when three or more lines intersect in one point. Just like in this picture. Now, the point where they intersect has a specific name. And that is that it is called the point of concurrency. So where all of these concurrent lines intersect is called the point of concurrency. So using those vocabulary words, we have another theorem in our book. Theorem 5-6. It does not have a special name. Please, please put this theorem on your theorem and postulate chart. Um, let's take a look at what this has to say because there's a lot of information in this. This is the perpendicular bisectors of the sides of a triangle are concurrent at a point equidistant from the vertices. Holy cow, that's a lot of information. So let's take a look at a picture. So here's our triangle. Let's give them some names. How about, let's do Z for Zoe, maybe S for Sarah, and C for Chris. All right, so let's take a look at all these perpendicular bisectors. Let's take a look at segment CZ first. So I'm going to highlight this guy in red. We're right here. We have to make a perpendicular bisector. So the first thing that we want to do is kind of find out where the midpoint of this segment would be. And the way that I'm looking at it, it looks like it would be maybe right here. Now I also have to make a perpendicular segment. So I want to try to create my right angle here. So I'm going to go ahead and run this all the way through my triangle until I hit the other side. This segment may not go through the vertex S, and that's okay. A lot of these are not going to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and let myself know that this segment is congruent to this segment. That's what a perpendicular bisector is. Let's go around the triangle and do all of those. Let's do ZS. So here's the S. Let's bisect it first, about right here. And remember, once again, I'm eyeballing this. If you were to do this on your own, I expect you to measure. So I'm going to let this go all the way across like this. There's my right angle. And this segment is congruent to this segment. And last but not least, CS. We're going to bisect that. Looks like it's about here. Make a right angle. And carry this all the way through through, like so, this segment congruent to this segment. Okay, so I did all of my perpendicular bisectors, so let's see the rest of this theorem. It says the perpendicular bisectors of the sides of a triangle, which we took care of already, are concurrent at a point. That means where they intersect, so I'm going to highlight that in black. That is equidistant from the vertices. We have three vertices here. We have C, Z, and S. So what's really cool about perpendicular bisectors of a triangle is that this point of concurrency is the same distance to Z as it is to S as it is to C. That's what that theorem says, and that is really cool information. Um, and this happens in every single triangle. So this circumcenter, uh, I'm sorry, not circumcenter, this um, point of concurrency has a, a special name for perpendicular bisectors. And its special name is called a circumcenter. And another really cool thing that we can do with this, since it's equidistant from all the vertices, is if I were to use a compass and set my the point of my compass on this point, I could do something really, really cool. If I were to set that compass width from this 
point of concurrency from this circumcenter to let's say z, I could trace it and it would end up making an absolutely perfect circle hitting all of the points of my triangle. Once again, I'm freehanding this, so it's not going to be perfect, but notice that it touches here, here, and here. So that's also something that is very cool about this theorem. So perpendicular bisectors, their points of concurrency are called circumcenters, and I can circumscribe a circle around this triangle, and every single vertex is going to hit the point, a point on that circle. Very cool stuff. So let's take a look at another kind of um, special point of concurrency. So here's our next theorem, theorem 5-7. It says the angle bisectors of a triangle are concurrent at a point equidistant from the sides. All right, let's take a look at that picture. So here's our triangle. We have M for Mathis, R for Rebecca, and H for Hayden. So let's take a look at the angle bisectors of this triangle. So I'm going to work with angle M first, and I'm going to try to eyeball this the best that I can and bisect or cut straight in half this angle. Let's see if I got this. Looks like, oh, that's not very good. Let me try again. Bad thing about these pins, they're not very accurate. There we go. Okay, so this looks like it's bisecting this angle. So this is going to be congruent to this angle. And let's work with angle R. Let's try to cut this in half. Let's see. Oh my goodness, that was awful. That was awful too. Okay, there we go for R. So this angle, oh my goodness gracious, this is ridiculous. All right, this angle is congruent to this angle. All right, and the next one. Here we go, and this angle here is congruent to this angle. All righty. Whew, so we got our angle bisectors. And we have a point of concurrency right here in black. And for angle bisectors, the name of this guy is called an in-center. And the, what's really cool about the in-center, if you look up in the theorem, is it says the angle bisectors of a triangle are concurrent at a point that is equidistant from the sides. So in other words, this point, if I were to create perpendicular distances, so something like this here, and this almost looks like it's perpendicular, so this here, and then this here, all of these segments, the ones in black, should be the same exact length, because they're equidistant from the sides. So, this also has something really cool about a circle. It, the circle is not going to be on the outside of the circle this time. It's going to be on the inside, which is why this is called an in-center. Let me show you what it looks like. So what this allows me to do is if I were to take my compass and set the point right at that center and follow it around, I would be able to create an absolutely perfect circle that would touch all three sides of this triangle. And of course this is not a perfect picture because I'm freehanding this. But that's what you can do with this particular um, angle bisectors and the in center. So really cool again. We've got a couple more to look at. Let's get going. Okay, so let's take a look at theorem 5-8. This one is about medians, and medians we actually have not looked at yet. We've looked at mid-segments and midpoints, but not medians. So let's try to draw that first. And this triangle will have my initials EML, Erin Marie Larson. So what we want to do is first understand what a median does. 
And a medium does something very, very simple. What it does is, and medians um, are going to connect a vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. So let's say I start with side ML. I'm going to first of all find the midpoint, so somewhere around here, I guess. And all I'm going to do is connect that to the opposite vertex, just like so. So that's a median. This segment is congruent to this segment. And I'm going to do that all the way around. So let's look at EL. The midpoint would be about here, I guess. And I'm going to connect this to, let's see, the opposite vertex would be M. So I'm going to connect it all. Oh, that was bad. Let me try again. I'm going to connect it all the way up to here. There we go. And that means this segment is congruent to this segment. And now the midpoint of the other side is going to be about here. And I'm going to connect that to the opposite vertex as well. So this segment is congruent to this segment. And then we have our point of concurrency here. So let's see what this theorem says again. It says the medians of a triangle are concurrent at a point that is two-thirds the distance from each vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. So what that says, that's, that's, there's a lot of vocabulary in there. I want you to take a look at the red segment in this triangle. Let's say that this has a particular name. I'm going to put P over here. Let's say that EP has a total length of 12 units. Okay? And I'm going to give this point of concurrency a name of, uh, let's just go with Q. That's going to be the black point there. If the entire red segment has a length of 12, then EQ will be two-thirds of the total length, which is 12. So here's what I do to find EQ. If I were to find EQ, this is what I would do. I would take that 12, and I'm going to multiply that by 2 thirds. So 12 is the same thing as 12 over 1. 12 times 2 is 24. 1 times 3 is 3. So this gives me a length of 8. So this length here would be 8, and therefore this length over here would be 4. So that's what that means. That's what that two-thirds part of that theorem says. Um, so what about the green segment? Maybe the green segment, which we can call, um, let's do the letter N. So let's say LN, and let's clear some of this up here real quick, now that we've calculated all of that. So let's do this equal to 9 units. So that means to find NQ, um, oh, not NQ, sorry, let's do LQ, because that's the segment that they're talking about. So LQ is going to be 2 thirds of 9. So we're multiplying these two together again, so that's 2 times 9, which is 18, over 3, 18 divided by 3 is 6. So this is 6 units here, therefore this must be 3 units here. So that's what that theorem says. And the point of concurrency also has a special name, and that is called a centroid. All right, we've got one more to look at. Okie dokie, and last but not least, uh, this is not necessarily a theorem, but it's a different kind of thing that we can do with our triangles, and that is altitudes. And altitudes is the perpendicular segment from a vertex to the line containing the opposite side. So just as when you think of altitude of, say, an airplane, we think of the height of an airplane in terms of it. If I were to connect a segment to that airplane to Earth, it would be a perpendicular segment. So 
Altitudes have different behavior in different kinds of triangles. So here's an acute triangle. I'm going to make a perpendicular segment from the vertex to the line opposite it. So I'm going to drag this down and make a right angle here. So it connects the perpendicular segment to a vertex. And as you can see here, this, out, this particular altitude um, is inside the triangle. And for a right triangle, if I were to look at the, the vertex at the very top and connect it um, to the very base at a perpendicular angle, a very interesting thing happens. The altitude is actually a side of the triangle. That's pretty cool. And then for an obtuse triangle, once again, if I take a look at the vertex at the top and I drag it down perpendicular from the triangle, this altitude is actually lying outside of the, tri of the triangle. So we've got three very interesting cases here. Now, let's take a look at the acute triangle. I'm going to go ahead and make altitudes um, from all of the sides. So from this side, perpendicular distance would be here. And from the other one, we're going to make it go like this. So here we have our point of concurrency with our altitudes. And the point of concurrency for altitudes is called an ortho center. Oops, I don't know why I put a G there. Ortho center. And there's nothing particularly special about this. I can't make a circle. Um, a part of the segment is in a certain length of the other. Um, it's just called an ortho center. And uh, this is the, the basic things that we need to know about altitudes. And um, the last thing that I want to show you is one last theorem, theorem 5.9 in your book, is this particular theorem in that the lines that contain the altitudes of a triangle are concurrent. In other words, it says what I pointed up here in the acute triangle. If I were to make altitudes on all sides of my triangle, they're concurrent, and they make um, a point of concurrency called the orthocenter. So that's it. That concludes this tutorial.